Hello and welcome to another QuickBooks training moment with Steiner Business Solutions. My name is Doug and today we're going to go over the preferences menu in uh, QuickBooks. It's a very large menu with a lot of different preferences related to all the different aspects of QuickBooks that you can change some of the default preferences, turn things on and off. Um, this will be a multi-part video actually because there are so many things to cover with regarding to preference. Uh, so this is going to be video one. So let's get started. To get to the preferences menu, go up under the edit menu and go down to preferences. It's going to open it up like this. You're going to see along the left hand side here all the general topics of things that you can change the preferences for. You scroll down and see how many different things that you can, uh, you can change. And then over to the right, you're going to see two tabs. One that says my preferences and one that says company preferences. If you have multiple users in your QuickBooks file, multiple users set up, then company preferences, if any changes here would change these preferences for everybody who uses that QuickBooks file. My preferences would only change you, uh, the preferences for you and your user. They wouldn't affect other people if there are other users using QuickBooks, uh, the same QuickBooks file. So under accounting, we've got autofill memo here under my preferences. This just copies the, uh, in general journal entries, copies the memo field from one line to the next. When you go down to the second line, it, it assumes you want to put the same uh, memo field in there. You can always override it. Under company preferences, though, under accounting, this is where you can select if you want to use account numbers. So it, it QuickBooks defaults to not using count numbers on your GL code. Um, they just have account names for all of your GL codes. But if you want to actually have a numbering system and use those, you would have to check this first, and then you'll see under the account setup screen for the GL codes, you'll see uh, a space where you can put in account numbers. Um, this is checked the default that you want to require accounts anytime you're using something. Um, use class tracking. This is where you turn on or off whether or not you want to use classes in QuickBooks. Um, not only can you turn it on or off here with this checkbox, but there's another one here that will prompt you if you check this to assign a class if you are entering uh, an entry, whether it's a journal entry, a bill, a, a payment, a customer invoice, something like that. Anything that would use classes, it's going to prompt. If you check this, it's going to prompt you if you forget to put a class in there. So it'll say, hey, you forgot to put a class. Are you sure you want to do that? Uh, are you sure you want to save this transaction without putting a class in? Uh, automatically assigned general journal entry numbers so you know this is just a just like creating invoice numbers it'll create it'll automatically go to the next invoice number the next check number the same thing with journal entries here more me when you want to post to if you are posting to a retained earnings account and then these things this is where it's controlled if you've seen these messages pop up whenever you try to enter a transaction that's dated uh, over 90 days in the past or over 30 days in the future, this is where it warns you. This is where you can turn those warnings on and off. Um, you can also um, change the day, date range if you want. And then this is also where you do a closing date. If you want to sign a password and actually close out your books for a certain period so that people can't go in and make changes to a prior period, you could select the date here and assign a password so that if if anybody tries to enter transactions or change transactions prior to that date, they have to know the password to be able to do that. That's that's kind of QuickBooks' way of closing the books, so to speak. All right, so the next topic is bills. So if we go into company preferences. It just says here it's going to automatically warn you if you have duplicate bill numbers. That just defaults that way, but you can turn it off if you want. It's automatically going to assume bills are due 10 days after they're received unless they are, you already have them set up with terms, that particular vendor. Um, and when you're paying bills, do you want it to automatically use any credits that are outstanding? Uh, or do you want to automatically use discounts? There are my preferences. There are really not, no preferences for individuals here. Here's your calendar. This is where you can change settings for your personal calendar. Again, this is, this is all for you personally as your user. You can update those if you use the calendar in QuickBooks. Uh, there are no company preferences there. Under checking, um, this is where you can just read through all these. Most of these are self-explanatory. Print account names on the voucher, the check vouchers if you want. Change check date when non-cleared check is printed. Start with the payee field when you're entering a check. Do you want the, the cursor to start at the payee field? 
worrying about duplicate and check numbers, obviously that defaults there and you would most likely want to leave that on. Uh, auto fill payee account number in the check memo. So if you have an account number with that vendor, whenever you do a check for that vendor, it'll put the account number in the check memo field. And then down here, if you want to, um, sorry about that. Down here, if you want to um, create paychecks or pay payroll liabilities, this is just the default checking account that you're gonna, it's gonna pull from. You can choose if you have more than one bank account. You can choose that here. It just be the default. And then the bank feeds for those of you who connect directly to your um, bank accounts, your online banking through QuickBooks. These are you can go through the express mode or the classic, the old mode. Um, this talks gives you some options of how you can apply rules to uh, renaming expenses. And then for you as a user, your personal preferences to do any of these types of transactions, again, this is where you can set the default bank account that you want it to use. Again, it's a default on the on these transactions. You can always change the uh, the account or the type of the bank account that you're using, but this is what it will default to. All right, desktop view. Under my preferences, it's automatically set to multiple windows. So you know you, know you can have multiple screens open, and on the right hand side, if you you can go back and forth between the different screens if you want. Um, you can minimize them, maximize them, that kind of thing. If you choose select one window, you can only have one window open at a time, and every time you want to go to a new one, you, it closes that window and opens a new one. Um, other options here for the desktop saving where you were at when you close the company, it's gonna uh, it's gonna save whatever screens you have up at that time, whatever transaction screens, and so when you open it again next time, it should it should open those back up. Um, here's where you can set for those of you who don't use the home page uh, you can actually turn that off so it doesn't come up every time you open the company file but it's automatically defaulted so that that home page does come up first every time you open the QuickBooks file um, switching color schemes and these are just links to actually changing the display settings and sound settings on your computer itself and then you can actually come down here and you can change the color scheme right now we're on a blue gray color scheme you can see it's blue gray here but you can change it to something else if you want. Actually, we'll probably have to hit OK for it to change. There we go. Yeah, it changed. Do something a little more obvious. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then company preferences. This is where you can turn on things like if you're going to use sales receipts, if you use statements and statement charges for your customers. Um, down here, this is, gives you links to these other things. If you, if you use estimates, sales tax, sales orders, inventory, these have to be on if you want them to show up on your desktop. And these are quick links to take you over to those screens to turn those things on and off and change those settings. Or again, you know, estimates, you can also go to jobs and estimates here. This is going to take you a link over to, to where the estimates are right here. So thanks for watching part one of our video on using preferences and adjusting preferences in QuickBooks. Make sure you come back and check out part two and part three. And also make sure you check us out on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any other social media sites like that. And uh, if you click on the link you should see on the screen, you can subscribe to our page and you'll be one of the first ones to be notified every time I put out a new video. Thanks.